So how did we get to this point? Where did all this debt come from? Where do all the large-scale wars come from? How did we end up arresting peaceful people for victimless non-crimes? Why are all the guns pointed at us to take our justly acquired property? How did we get fiat, counterfeited, monopoly-controlled currency? Why arrest adults for what they put in their own bodies when they have never infringed on the rights of others? How did we get to the point of using coercion on people who walk across an unbusy street? Why all the violence and poverty and death and decay and decline? Why all the statism? More importantly, how all the statism? Most of us have heard of the assembly line. Ford was one of the first ones to implement such a massive operation, and it was successful, allowing for multiple, smaller factors and variables to come together to create one great big final product. It's not that the structure was well known to the buyer. The consumer simply went in, purchased a car, and many had little knowledge as to how the car was actually manufactured, let alone all the small pieces that went into its creation. Statism, with its suppliers, voters, its consumers, lobbyists, and its workers, politicians, is similar to an assembly line, except, of course, for the fact that a private sector assembly line cannot force you to purchase their goods and services at gunpoint, whereas statism can. Statism started with a false belief. What was this belief? the belief that society needs to be trapped to coercion and the political system that it gives birth to. Why is it that people continue to support statism today even with the knowledge that government is coercion? Many people are stuck endlessly fighting a losing battle against the opposing major parties. They have been conditioned from birth to believe in that political parties matter and that they are the societal norm for bringing about positive steps for society. Others are more realistic, simply not wanting to admit that a free society is possible, because to do so would be admitting that what they have been defending and encouraging is evil. The countless persons behind bars for non-crimes, the dead lives on their hands, for nothing. Why is it that centuries ago, governments threatened to imprison people for stating the fact that the earth was round? Well, a few corrupt individuals knew that they could continue the lie if they silenced enough people. Of course, the average serf didn't have internet back in those days, so spreading rationality was much more difficult and time-consuming than it is today. The whole church and society and the individual followers and the troops and almost everybody just went along with the groupthink. Not to their advantage, of course, but to the advantage of a few. The few who had control over the government guns and the history books. The reason the lie that the earth was flat lasted so long? Because the few who had power and made a nice living off the status quo made sure that the current myths were not rejected. Can you imagine an arms dealer giving up their lucrative contract at the military industrial complex? Of course not! They are fighting for their own advantages over others, not for a fair and freer market. The last thing they want to do is have their theft and murderous activities exposed, as it would ruin the entire operation. Statism starts, continues, and expands because people continue to lie to themselves. They try to justify their actions by ignoring the fact that government is coercion. Most people reach for one single issue and hammer that home through the system. They get involved, support their favorite politicians, try to change the system towards their goals, and wrongly believe that they are doing good for all by using these government guns on peaceful people. Special interests after special interests stack up, creating a conglomerate institution of guns that people must fight over so that their people can have control 
over who to point the guns at. These mistruths, these lies, this apathetic and sympathetic support giving credence to the idea that governments can be good are the raw materials that go into the statist assembly line. And the system, with its torture and death and theft and murder and abuse and victimless crimes and industry oligopolization and the military-industrial complex through taxation theft, they're all the final goods. And the final goods will always be the same. Corporate lobbyists, taxation theft for the military-industrial complex wars, crimes that have no victims. Why? Because moral men do not participate in such a system, which only leaves one type of person to take control. You can't get rid of large-scale war, or fiat currency, or torture, or victimless crimes without ending statism. Most people simply have a hard time admitting that other people don't need rulers, maybe leaders, but not rulers. The government's statist assembly line is similar to private sector businesses in various aspects, though. The main being that statist assembly lines can be put out of business by its rival. Once humanity begins to realize that allowing oligarchs and tyrants to reign over us with terror only leads to long-run unintended consequences, that organized coercion is always overrun by those who seek to control, not to enable, that once these truths have permeated society and the lies and myths truths of generational groupthink dissipates, the statist assembly line and the violence it spreads will vanish almost immediately and the world will be better because of it.